I'm Drutter. Today is January 5th, 2016, and this is the second video in my channel highlight series, covering the noteworthy events of 2010. If you haven't seen the first video, covering 2006 through 9, click the link provided. The end of this video will contain a link to the next, once it's available. In 2009, my channel turned its focus on precious metals, with liberty remaining my passion. In 2010, I ramped up my efforts, following the exciting precious metals bull market, learning and sharing eagerly as I went. Some unique footage, important historical data, and valuable reference material was uploaded to the Drutter channel in 2010. Check it out. During the first half of the year, silver's price wasn't able to get above 19 US dollars. Some felt it would return to 11 or so. I predicted it would break out above 20. In the meantime, I covered some important stories in market fundamentals, added to my library of how-to reference material, and commented on the state of the YouTube silver community. January saw me poking fun at the mannerisms and expressions of other YouTubers who did silver videos, to raise awareness of some channels I thought were worth watching. In February, I recommended stackers of physical metal not sell their bullion when the digital price drops, but to use it as a buying opportunity. I then continued my trend of affordable cooking videos, this time baking a large pizza at home for a few dollars. And there we have it. Later in the month, as silver dipped to $16 Canadian, I asked, if you aren't buying at these prices, what are you doing? Soon after that, I advocated withdrawing all funds from banks and converting to precious metals and food. Silver spot was 16 and one ounce maples were $19 Canadian. Prices have stayed well above that level ever since. In March, I showed how to remove tarnish from silver. It went viral, becoming YouTube's go-to video for care of physical silver, now nearing half a million views. I next showed that when looking historically, an ounce of silver should have the purchasing power today of several hundred dollars. This video was going viral, but then it stopped suddenly at the end of 2011 and didn't get any further views. Also in March, I documented the building up of a surveillance state and my concerns about further erosions of privacy coming. After that came an educational video on quadrillion, during which I noted the US debt was over 12 trillion. One quadrillion years is 73,000 times the age of the universe. Should it worry us that the numbers coming out of our financial system these days aren't even possible for us to grasp. By the end of March, I decided to focus my gardening videos on tomatoes from now on, and advocated growing garlic, composting, and compost tea. It ended up being a terrible year for gardening in the Vancouver area. As April came on, I did a video on the Andrew McGuire story as he exposed the CFTC and JP Morgan's financial fraud. It also became one of my viral videos, getting 60,000 views in the first month, but then flatlined around 92,000 later on. The fraud he exposed is being called the largest financial fraud in human history. Another extremely interesting point revealed in the interview is that silver and gold are now leveraged 100 to 1 in these exchanges. Next, I enjoyed the experience of purchasing some tomato seedlings directly with silver bullion, encouraged viewers to check out Mike Maloney and his new YouTube channel, asked Mike Maloney what the average person can do about precious metals manipulation, and more lightheartedly, about silver porn addiction, and concluded that value comes from something being scarce and or useful. In a mostly unseen upload, I said, this makes a conspiracy theorist, one who hypothesizes about, proposes an explanation for, and attempts to understand or discover an evil, unlawful, or treacherous secret plan. If that's the definition, and Dictionary.com tells us that it is, I'm proud to call myself a conspiracy theorist. I then listed JFK's death, 
and precious metal price manipulation as examples involving conspiracy. Soon after that, I showed my face and body, only slightly blurred. In May 2010, almost six years ago, I spoke against cannabis prohibition, declaring the plant to be medicine, food, fuel, clothing, and fun. June saw Medicaid's first major vocal appearance as we recognized the need for a new world order, but one with the people in control. I then put out my first of many investigative reports on local silver bullion availability, finding very little anywhere in Vancouver. I believe reporting on the state of the physical bullion market is very important, and I have continued to do so. It ended up being terrible weather for growing food, but I did my best to battle the deer and rain and get my seeds back. Also in June, my second hip-hop music video. Next came a moment when I personally decided to stand up against tyranny as I reported on Canada's emerging police state, seen at the G20 in Toronto. After showing my first potato harvest, I also showed my first silver sativa, dropped my first knowledge on cannabis, and scaled up my efforts on CanadianSilverBullion.com. Through early July, I continued my coverage of the G20 disaster for Canadian liberty. Next came my upload, System Failure, where I explained my line in the sand was crossed, declared the system unsalvageable, and declared myself a revolutionary. Late in July, I advocated owning junk silver, rounds, and bars, and reported on the developing local silver bullion shortage. In August, I was getting more interested in copper. Next, I declared the US dollar and other fiat currencies failed and either dead or dying. I burned one to prove my point. In September, I was reluctantly selling my 20 gram gold bar to repair my PC and camera just as precious metals began their blast off. Thankfully, I didn't have to sell the gold, as Stella Concepts raised $500 in a raffle and a local friend donated the other $500 needed. Precious metals were heating up. I encouraged cool heads and buying physical if you haven't done so already. I felt that silver wouldn't return to $14 unless there was a false flag event or stock market collapse. I then released my best Burning Man series, before or since, in three parts. The series is my answer to the question, what is Burning Man, and contains lots of unique footage of the event, artwork, music, and participants. It also explains my fascination with 47. Next, I decided and declared this is primarily a silver channel. I noted the price was over $21 now and predicted a few months of big moves up, recommended buying on the dips, and reported that the local bullion shortage continues. In mid-September, Mike Maloney responded to my questions from earlier in the year, saying he would rather take advantage of precious metals price manipulation than stop it, and that his attraction to metal is in profiting off it rather than its aesthetics. Later in September, my kids read the silver update, opened an envelope of silver sativas, and reminded the viewer to question authority. I linked viewers to a new channel called SGT Bull 07. In October, I showed how to ship coins safely and discreetly, discussed changes to CanadianSilverBullion.com, said I was doing lots of volume but not making a profit yet, and enjoyed the lessons I was learning about the free market. As the silver price neared to $23, I recommended having a core position of precious metals, predicted a long bull run, and repeated the silver will go extinct rumor that was later found to be a misquote. I then introduced the silver timber wolf coin, predicting it would gain in premium over time. My next upload was called, How Long Will We Pretend It's Working?, where I listed everything wrong with the Western world, 
categorized people into three groups and began a custom of linking to Shadowstat's economic data. Just before Halloween, I reported on a story where J.P. Morgan and HSBC were being sued for silver conspiracy. Little came of it, but it was incredible at the time. In November, I gave suggestions for how to get silver into the UK safely and without VAT being added, then recommended Paltalk's bullion rooms for chat and info. Then QE2 was announced, along with 0% interest rates for, quote, a long time. I predicted the official narrative of the recovery is here just slow being a lie, and only recently we saw the Fed finally raise rates a token quarter of a percent, and we still have no recovery except in the stock market. Next came a video that contains a good overview of my positions. I said I was about 20% technical analysis and 80% fundamentals. Silver was 27 in both US and Canadian dollars. I said, fuck you to the doubters, feeling cocky. Lessons were learned. Food inflation was a constant concern of mine and of my viewers, so I then showed how to make affordable California roll sushi. Next, I uploaded a video advertising the new Paltalk Room bullion bugs. I talked about the deepening local silver shortage, which saw premiums rising, increased weights to buy, and decreased selection. I noticed that increased demand was following increased price, since in 2010 price and demand had not yet diverged like they did in 2012. Next came a one-minute upload on how to make french fries, which snuck in a brief mention of silver to educate non-subscribers. Silver is real money. Unlike paper money, it actually has intrinsic value. Stir the fries occasionally. I then joined the Crash JP Morgan viral campaign, suggesting we convert as much of our savings into metal as possible to combat fractional reserve banking and fiat corruption. Many lessons can be learned about today's silver market from these stories from a Vancouver bullion dealer about the 1980 Hunt Brothers event. He was there. Next, I spoke against the government controlling our food sources, calling corporate-influenced food laws tyranny. I encouraged support of alternate media sources, advocated for growing your own food, and predicted that the Second Amendment would be the last one taken. Your economy is completely controlled. The food that you can put into your body now is completely controlled. The information you're able to access by the internet is now completely controlled. There is only a very small amount of free information on the internet, and you're looking at it right now. Okay? I think that weapons are going to be the last thing that they take. I began December with a reference video which helps an average of eight people every day answer the question, which silver maple leaf dates carry a premium? Five years later, it's approaching 14,000 views. I introduced local musician Elaine Diane Taylor's YouTube channel in a video where I predicted the silver market will continue up but throw us curveballs. Next, I reported that the local silver shortage continues and that the one ounce timber wolf is now completely sold out into the secondary market. Then I called around Vancouver and confirmed there were no maples for sale at any price. My kids asked me for precious metals for Christmas, and I showed them off to my viewers before wrapping them. As the year ended, I reused my flawless predictions from the previous year. Bigger government, worse economy, more war, and less liberty. Stay tuned for the next highlight video of the Drudder channel. 2011 was an historic year for price action, and saw many key moments for me the YouTube silver community, and the liberty-related topics we follow.